everyone. I'm Rick Bensignor. Today is Tuesday, November 23rd, and welcome to this week's In the No Trader show. We've got tech stocks getting uh, hit for the second day in a row, down 1% yesterday, and uh, right now over 1%. That's the first time since March that we potentially have back-to-back -back losing days of a percent or more, as we're seeing profit taking, again, across the board. Uh, in the tech sector, oil is up. The 10 year is now at 165. That's its best level in a couple of weeks, I think. And uh, the SP is down about 10. What do we have on tap today for our show? Well, in the trader education portion, we're going to say, what's a trader's trade? And we'll talk about that and how often those uh, ideas can show up. In our market overview, we'll take a look at the Dow, the US 10 year, and the dollar that uh, has continued to rally. And this week we'll get to what we couldn't get to last week, we just didn't have enough time to hit the consumer discretionary space. So we'll take a look at not only XLY, the spider ETF that tracks consumer discretionary, but it in relative terms to the spiders. And then, uh, I don't know, 10 names or so that are big cap um, consumer discretionary names. So that's what we've got on tap for the week. To sign up and become an In The No Trader client, go to our website, inthenotrader.com, go to the sign up page. There you get information uh, about what it is we have and pricing. Uh, we have a weekly ETF tactical trader report that uh, gives you a new ETF trading idea each week, go over the macro uh, scene of what, what's affecting markets uh, across multiple asset classes, and then reviews all the open trade ideas that we have until they get closed out. And then this monthly 7-Eleven report, a different report comes out the last day of each trading month, unless it's a weekend, in which case it'll probably come on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and what that does is uh, the 7-Eleven report is, is a uh, modified portfolio meant to outperform the S&P by being in no less than five or more than seven of the 11 spider macro ETFs with the goal of avoiding the underperformers, overweighting the, the ones that we do want to be in to come up with a uh, portfolio of five to seven ETFs that virtually track the S&P, but uh, presumably do better. And since we started that August 1st of 2020 uh, through October 31st, we are outperforming by 4.44% in those, uh, what is that, 15 or 16 months um, and doing very well with that. So if you want to do better than the S&P, instead of just buying spiders, subscribe to this report and you have a much better chance. You're taking less risk because you're not fully invested across the S&P. And um, we, again, are outperforming at a replay. So that's what we've got for you. Let's talk about what's a trader's trade. Well, look, there's investing and there's trading. And then trading can be broken down into swing trading, shorter term than swing trading, and day trading. I would say those are kind of the three. Uh, so, you know, a few weeks, a quick a, a trade that you put on kind of for just uh, a move in the market. Uh, not not long term, uh, generally a month or less, I would say, is swing trading. Uh, then even something quicker than that over a few days and then day trading. Day trading is super hard for most people. Um, you're fighting against more things than you can imagine. The, the, the odds are heavily stacked against you to consistently win in day trading. And that's why I don't generally recommend it. I tend to trade myself both in uh, I'd say the swing trade area is, is often what I do. Um, and, and of course, with stocks, uh, having been in a bull market for so long and, and being in a bull market for, uh, you know, if you look at a hundred year chart, you know that stocks move up over time. Uh, and granted, we can go sideways for a long time as we did between, let's say, uh, 2000, 2012. Uh, so you certainly can go periods of time uh, where you're sideways, but generally there's a bullish spin to the market. And therefore, you know, I, I tend to um, put most of my trades on on the bullish side and um, will depend the time frame, depending upon kind of what I intended when I first got into it. Sometimes I'm playing directly for 
you know, a target that might be six uh, percent higher, and I'm you know, it's a trade, and generally a short-term trade. I wouldn't wouldn't get into something longer term for only a six percent target. So that's something I might do over a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, I, I don't make a habit out of day trade. Um, so a trader's trade is is a trade that sets up to be something that could be a quick trade in and out, uh, generally leaning on a number or a level uh, or a trend line or a moving average, something that you're just expecting to hold um, and you play against it. And often, you know, it's a two or three day trade. It's literally to see if something holds. You don't necessarily know if it's going to hold in the bigger picture, but you know you're probably going to be joined by other people thinking the same way, enough so to offset the forces that are in the opposite direction um, to make a quick positive trade. So let me show you something that I think happens all the time in the markets. Um, and you, you can generally look at this on any stock. I'm going to start off with... We'll take a look at a few here. So here's uh, Facebook, which obviously just changed its name to Meta Platforms. And what I've done here is just simply draw nothing but horizontal lines. And the horizontal lines are usually at a high or low. Um, and if I've got two lines of the same color really close together, it's generally that they both created a support zone or resistance zone. Um, and the trades here that line up more times than you can imagine are something like, well, here, let's start here. This orange line was the lowest low in January. It's never, the market hasn't come back, you know, Facebook hasn't come back to test that level. Here you had highs. Now, why do I have two lines here? I do this because when you've got a high followed by another high, and the, that second high is a higher high but it closes lower than the day before's high, then I'll kind of look at both of those highs as being potential resistance and not just the highest high. And again, that's because the day that made the highest high actually had a close that's lower than the day before. So I look at these two consecutive highs kind of as important. What I'm saying is, is that when you, and we'll take a look at the blue line in a second, when you come back and test either the high or in this case, this double lined high, you often get a quick trade in the opposite direction. Now, in this case, it really only lasted a day. Usually you can get one to three days fairly safely from one of these type trades. Here we had a high, sold down, sell down notice was the same as the lows. So quick trades leaning on horizontal levels, right? There's no, I'm not, in the examples I'm going to show you, I'm not using trend lines and not using moving averages. I'm simply showing you horizontal levels. Why do these tend to mean something? Because algorithms look at what prior highs and lows are and set their orders and keep, especially the high frequency traders will keep leaning on these levels until they're proven wrong. Um, so, you're, you often have company when you find a prior high or a prior low. Now, there's lots of little interim highs or lows too. And like, how do you know which ones to use or which ones not to use? So what do I typically do? We'll look at, as a minimum, I generally want to see a higher low that I'm looking at having five days on either side of it not exceed, let's say in this case, the highs. So I want to see that I'm on like a five-day high. And then I want to see it at least sell off so that that high stays a high on either side of five days of making that high, right? It's the highest high leading into there for the prior five days. It's the highest high in the subsequent five days. Doesn't have to be five days. It's just a number I'm often working with some, somewhere around there. I just want to get some sense that a high is still a good enough level as a high. And so, for instance, this high here sells off, comes back, tests it. Now you have a close little through it. So how do you stop yourself? I'll usually use on something like this where I'm leaning on a level, a half percent to one and a half percent is my stop. Um, and so on a $330 stock, we're talking about, you know, $3.30. Well, anywhere from a buck and a half, roughly $1.65 to could be as much as $5. Um, and, we'll, and again, looking for a quick, trade of two or three days, or like I say, a trader's trade. I'm not saying this is going to be the high, 
and then I can sell it here and buy it back down there. I have no idea. What I do know is that this high here is surrounded on either side by five days that didn't exceed that high. And therefore I probably have a chance to lean on it. And again, a quick trade. Here's a high, pulls back, tests it again, pulls back, tests it again. I can't tell you I'm gonna hold it down here. I just know there's a quick trade in here. Uh, here's a high, and I would have, if I leaned against that high, I would have been stopped out probably right in here. Um, on the way down, here's a low. It makes a lower low and closes up. So I'm gonna take the day before and the day of the low and say, there should be support in here if we come back and test it. Here's a high, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, hmm, close. The sixth day came back and tested it and sold off. So again, if I hold this for a couple of days, I'm making money. And this, this one, in fact, is where Facebook's trading right now. One example of a stock that generally moved higher. Let's look at something that's moving lower, like Peloton. So here was the high in December for Peloton, sells off. Makes a higher high, but notice doesn't close above. Um, close to whether or not you get stopped out here. If you do, the good thing about this is if you're wrong, you take a really small loss. If you're right, sometimes you catch a good move of two, three times what you're risking. Uh, we sell down here. Is this low have five days that came into it that were higher lows? Yes, five days after it. Yes, so I'm going to take that. Well, we come down, test it and bounce over the next few days. Again, quick trades, not staying in these. These are traders' trades. Um, eventually, Peloton sells it down. Look where it stops against the November lows. And it holds there for almost two months in March, or certainly a month and a half before it broke. All I'm saying is, if I buy into this zone, a couple of days later, I'm up $20 on the trade. What was I risking? A few dollars. Um, now I have, you know, a level here to lean against. If I if I leaned against it here, I have a, a day, no, I guess not even two, second day you would have been stopped out and I get a higher high. I know that's a level to potentially lean on in the future and so on. Let's, uh, here, look where we came back to, the same lows that we saw in early October were the same lows of May. And that's the current picture. So you're not gonna make on every one of these trades for sure. Um, but if you do them consistently, keep your stops anywhere to a half percent to one and a half percent, generally you're going to come out ahead because the market comes back and revisits levels time and time again. You could do this, where did I set this up? I think it was IWM. Yeah, All right. So the NASDAQ, uh, not the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000. This was in a trading range for what, six, seven months, something like that. There's plenty of times that it comes back and leans on levels here. You would have lost, makes a new high, comes back, test this low, right? So if you bought this within a day or two or three, you're making some very solid money. Comes back, test what had been the prior level, comes into the zone. Now, again, this is, this, this is easier than most because this ended up being a pure sideways uh, thing. And we had the breakout that all the technicians, including myself, looked to be a significant breakout. We're certainly getting challenged on this now, whether or not this is a valid breakout or not. Um, there's even, let's see, short-term trend line probably is, yeah, even that broke yesterday or today, actually. That's today, real time. Um, so the idea is pull your charts out, draw horizontal lines at key levels. And if you're a pure trader, you can trade against prior highs and lows um, and generally get, if you, if you control your risk, like I'm saying, you can usually get stopped out with a small loss. And if you're right, you're gonna, wait, you're gonna make more than you, you lose. And that's kind of just one way of looking at a trader's trade it is leaning on a level, looking for it to hold, stopping yourself out uh, quickly after if it doesn't hold and looking for a quick move to the opposite direction over the next couple of days. And then that's it, you close out. Um, you're, let, let's say you bought this here and you know in a day or two, you're up as much as, uh, what, 
$15, something like that, $12, $15. I'm not going to play and keep holding and holding. I have no idea if we're coming back to the range or not. I'm just saying that you can often lean on levels that are significant highs or lows against prior highs and lows and get a sense. Now, could you add an RSI into that formula? Sure. And you can quicken your RSI because you're looking really short term. So instead of, you know, most people default to a 14 day RSI. I will ask you, why are you using 14 days? And you're going to do it because that's what generally most technical systems default to. Uh, because Wells Wilder back in, I think it was the 1970s when he came up with, with relative strength index, um, decided to use 14 days. I can't tell you why. I've never seen any reason why 14 days is a good level to use. Uh, it's not even uh, half the trading days in a month. It just, to me, makes no sense. So I use 11 days, which my, my default is 11. It's half the trading days in the month. Uh, I think a much better way of, of thinking about something. And if you're trading really short term, I would even cut it down to maybe, uh, I don't know, six days, something like that. And you're going to get a much so here. If we just take our RSI chart, modify it, cut it down to, let's say, six trading days, this is going to get much spikier. But if they line, if you get overbought or oversold, at the same time you're hitting these levels, you might find it's a much better way of being able to time for a short-term trade. So anyway, that's just um, something I wanted to teach you. And it's an easy way of coming up with levels to lean against, risking a small amount to play for a, you know, a, a quick but bigger move in the opposite direction. All right, so that's that. Let's take a look now, go into uh, just getting a little overview of the market before we get into the consumer discretionary names. Here's the Dow, uh, made a new all-time high a couple of days ago and has backed off. I've highlighted here, you know, this to me looks like the real support level. It's, vir it's virtually against the two prior lows or even three prior lows, because here, if we go back into this, I'm sorry, this is a weekly chart. Um, we go back in here, we can see how often we're darn close to this horizontal purple colored line. So we've got two different trend lines coming into this area. The TDST line that held the last time down back in September. Um, and now the top of the cloud just a little beneath it. So that zone in there is the main support. Anything in here is kind of market noise. Be interesting to see that after we sold off and got above both the conversion and baselines, whether or not they hold or not here. Um, but, but you know, to me, this is the key area of support for the market. Um, just something to keep an eye on. Let's look at the weekly 10-year. Uh, notice, too, came back, not only tested these lows, went a little through, but also played against the channel line uh, before coming back. And now, so the highest high we saw was at 1.69%, uh, so we're at 1.66%. We're leaning up back against this trend line that we had broken through. So we know there is some resistance here, you know, potential trades. Um, and the dollar. So last week, the dollar made a setup nine count. We hit the Fibonacci 50% retracement. To me, the more meaningful number was here at the uh, propulsion exhaustion level, which so far is just about this week's high. You know, this is a level. Uh, also, when you look at where the dollar broke down from, somewhere it's this level. So, you know, I've been telling clients 96 and a half up to 98 is where I want to uh, lean into the dollar. And there is, by the way, a TDSD line here at 97.20. Um, that was the highest high in the nine count going in this particular nine count going down. So, that's the zone that I would lean and kind of say that I think the dollar is going to get um, weaker from. So that's kind of the overview. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's see, XLY. So let's get into the consumer discretionary sector. New all time high this week. Uh, the sector has uh, rebounded more so than any other sector off of the sell off that we saw in the early fall. Um, we're on a seven count here, seven towards a nine. Initial support 202 and change. Then you've got kind of the cloud basis and then the propulsion exhaustion level 
at 189.56. Be interesting to see. I know we've got a holiday short week here, um, whether or not over, what did I say, Tuesday, so Wednesday, and the short day on Friday, whether or not we hold above uh, our threes close as well as the propulsion level. Um, otherwise, this could easily finish out a nine counts over the next couple of weeks. Let's look at XLY. Uh, do we have it in relative terms? No, so let's just do it here. XLY divided by SPY. So here's your weekly relative performance chart. Notice even in this chart, right? We had an all time high, we sell off, we go and test it. Whether you trade it here or here against that, it's a horizontal line against an all time high. Um, you got a great trade on if you had done that as a pure trade. And again, you wouldn't have likely, well, let's see, one, two, it's possible if you held it for three weeks, one, two, three, you, you could have actually, um, maybe even gotten it for a very big trade in relative terms to the S&P. Now we've poked through, but a nine count, so I would have waited for the nine count rather than leaning against the level, knowing that it was on an eight, I'm gonna wait for the nine. So if anything, I would have leaned more this way, quick trade. So one week down, one week up, you're kind of right now at break even, but same type idea. Uh, so this has made new all-time highs, pulled back a little from the nine, getting back underneath this uh, dotted line here, which is what, where the highs were. Um, tough to see as long as you know we're kind of above here, uh, the low from two weeks ago in relative terms, we're okay. And this could ultimately make its way higher, but uh, I can't make a decision here um, on, on this as far as just the general picture of whether or not consumer discretionary is gonna continue to stay um, outperforming the S and P. All right, let's get into uh, individual names now. We got about six minutes, which we'll, we'll go quickly through as many of these as we can. So let's start with Amazon. Uh, let's see, do I have it here or not? No. So we'll just take. So to me, very important that Amazon, when a stock goes sideways for a long time and it hits its cloud. And the cloud's been coming up. Usually it bounces off the cloud and you can see it's done that multiple times since then. It still is having hard trouble getting through what was all time highs from July. Uh, so we, we definitely have some resistance that we touched last week, uh, but we're still in a five count. So there's still at least some positive basis support now at about 3465 ish, give or take a little bit. Um, and generally we just wanna see this cloud hold. Uh, now it gets very thin going forward, so it's much easier for it to break through in a, you know, towards the beginning of the year if it was going to do that on the downside. But in general, this is still okay, but unable to make new highs. Tesla, weekly chart here, all-time high a month ago on a nine count towards a 13. Notice conversion line from the cloud chart caught the low here. Well above its cloud, same thing, went sideways, bounced on its cloud, it made it new all-time highs. Uh, so similar picture here, upside targets at 1330 and 1682, if it kept going. Um, so far, you know, still okay. Traders, you probably stop out against that double weekly low from there. So somewhere underneath, uh, what's that, 978. Uh, Home Depot. New all time high this week on an eight count, eight's higher than six and seven, could be starting to get tired. These were exhaustion propulsion, full exhaustion propulsion levels. So we stuck through them, but haven't really been able to progress for support at 389, uh, let's call it 390. And then down into this little cluster here between 357 and 371. McDonald's, all time high is a, a month ago, hanging in there nicely. Again, held the important support levels from the uh, baseline, just like the S&P did, just like the NASDAQ did on the sell-off. So still looking okay, no issues here. Uh, you'd have to break under 233 to start getting really concerned, uh, although you'd have the cloud underneath. But so so I'd look at 241-ish, 242 as being the level you wanna see hold on Friday closes. Otherwise it may be time to take some money off the table. Nike, uh, same thing a few weeks ago, made the all-time high hanging out near here leaning up against this risk level from the 13 here, hasn't broken through properly yet. So 
uh, first support 167-ish, give or take, and then down um, 161 to 152. Starbucks. Uh, this is interesting. So went sideways for half a year. Bounces off the top of his weekly cloud, bounced again last week and this week, but in the context of 13, tough, uh, tough call here. Um, the way I'd probably look at this is um, if I'm long, I'd stay long. I would not want to see this 104 level get breached on the downside. On the upside, uh, targets are 123, 132, and then 138. Lows. New all time high this week on an eight count, uh, hit its full propulsion exhaustion level. There's an older full propulsion, propulsion exhaustion level. Going all the way back to November sell off of 2020, up at just about where is that 247 and change, something like that. Um, right now, same thing. Look, baseline low, baseline held baseline holding so now 219 or so um any yeah no that's not right yeah 219 uh is where i want to see hold uh booking very expensive stock in price terms 2300 uh, a share uh, has this 13 went sideways, tested the stop out level, put right back again. Look, held the cloud on a sell off, still holding the cloud. Um, don't want to see price come out through the bottom end of the cloud. So, under 2024, I'd be concerned on this. Otherwise, it's still okay. Target all time high in the weekly 13 sells off to a nine. This actually broke beneath its baseline before coming back. Um, and both baseline and conversion lines have come together right now. So um, if it breaks, look for 224 to the cloud, top of the cloud to be for support. Depends if it breaks quickly, that's lower. If it takes a month to break, uh, the cloud's much closer. So I'd look at 225-ish down to, I don't know, let's just say 213-ish now for some type of support. Uh, on the upside, targets at 273, 276 and a half, and then 323 on the upside. TJ Maxx, uh, sideways for a long time also. Uh, you see some of these stalling signals, the nine, the 13, the nine, they've all kept this completely in a trendless sideways pattern. But notice again, the weekly cloud has caught all, well, how many weeks in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks in a row. It looks like the low of the week has been the top of the weekly cloud. Um, you don't want to see this come out through the bottom and down at 61 and change. Otherwise, this is still okay. And the last one we're going to get to is GM. GM also kind of went. You know, rounding top pattern, what did it do? It hit its cloud and started climbing up its cloud. Uh, all time highs last week. We got close to it this week, still decent. Um, in the near term, I want to see um, these recent lows hold. Otherwise, we're going down to 50 ish. On the upside, you've got multiple targets here in the upper 60s to 72. That's it for this week. We've used our half hour. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm Rick Bensignor. This has been In The No Trader. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.